Hello everybody, it's Mike here at from Scratch, and today we are talking about an admittedly niche subject. This is about a programming language and game engine that is all about teaching beginners how to learn how to program. This is an MIT-sponsored project. It's been around for well over a decade. And this, again, is all about introducing people to programming games. So if you are an older developer or you're looking for a professional game engine, this is definitely not the video for you. But if you have someone young in your life and you want to introduce them to programming, especially for game programming, Scratch is where it's at in a lot of ways. Speaking of which, I've actually already done a document on this. If you're looking at getting a kid, a nephew, a niece, your own child, or you're a teacher and you're looking at introducing people to the world of game programming, I have done this article that basically breaks down the primary options out there. Things like Construct, Love, Scratch, uh, Alice, and various other different beginner-oriented programming languages. And I'll make sure I link that down below as well. For each one, it's got a bit of an overview of what you get, what it costs, how it works, and so on. And again, Scratch is an excellent choice if you are looking at getting your child into game programming. Not so much for adults. It's fun to play with, to be honest. I, I actually, in checking out this new version, spent about a half an hour on my iPad just playing around last night. But not really really targeted at you. Now, there is this post up on Medium that's about the release of um, Scratch. 3.0 was released on November the 2nd, so it's a couple days ago, and it kind of got a bit of a breakdown of what is new in Scratch. We're going to go through the new release, and then I'm actually going to show you Scratch hands-on. Now, the cool thing about Scratch is it runs directly in a browser, or you can download it locally. And as I mentioned earlier, I was running this in my iPad. So you can run this on your phone, you can run this in your browser, like I said, you can download a local copy. Um, one of the big things about this one is the new extension support. And this is where you, as a more experienced programmer might also come in. So if you've got your kid that you want them to give some functionality, well, you can write extensions in JavaScript to give additional functionality to Scratch. And some of the extensions you see here are things like Lego Mindstorm integration, uh, text-to-speech via Amazon text-to-speech services, Google Translate extensions, and so on. We'll see some of those in a second. So that's a big part of this. There's new tool, um, tutorials and activities in place, new character sounds and backgrounds. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier on, Scratch runs basically everywhere, including in the desktop or in your browser or on your phone. So that's kind of the, the key things about 3.0. I will again toss this link down below along with this link to all the other options that are out there. And there is also this link. So if you're looking for specifics of exactly what is new in 3.0, what you need about it, um, and so on and so forth. This is basically the 3.0 FAQ. I'm not gonna go through this in a lot of details because a lot of this actually kind of assumes that you've got a bit of prior experience or it goes into kind of a nitty technical detail that would just bog this video down. So instead what we are going to do is go see Scratch. Now this is the homepage. This is scratch.mit.edu. Again, this is completely free to use. Now you can log in. So if you wanna have any persistence, you should join and then log in so you can save your projects and so on. I don't care about any of that stuff. So I'm just going to jump in. Now you've got a bunch of sample projects you can work from, but you can just come in here and do a start creating. Again, there is a local client version you can download. I imagine it probably uses Electron or something to make things work. We Okay, so here we are in the primary programming area. What you see here is this is just a straight out tutorial. We can flip through, get different instructions on how to actually use uh, Scratch, but hey, who wants tutorials? So here we are, primary area. This is where you program for the selected entity. So you see here we have a sprite called Sprite1. Uh, that, that it shows the active entity here for your programming surface. So what we wanna do is add some logic to this guy when things happen. So you see over here, you've got kind of your palette of things that work together. And if you've ever used like like stencil or construct, you've seen this style of programming. I imagine actually they probably took it from Scratch. Scratch I think is one of the first one to do this Lego brick style of things. We see here, okay, so what we've got, you see here these ones with the hump, those are originators. Those are when things came in. So what I'm gonna do is when this sprite is clicked, and then what we'll do is just go ahead and play a sound. So play sound until it's done. So go ahead, hit play. And then we could go ahead, click the sprite, and there is your meow. So that is how you actually go about programming things. And you can chain these things on together, or we can do things. If you go into your um, control, this is where your loops and such are. And then what you do is we put the brick of whatever is inside. So let's go ahead and we'll do a quick. So here is a pretty much a for loop that repeats 10 times. And then what we'll do inside of it is we'll go to the motion section, and then we'll move 10 steps. So we're going to move basically a hundred steps as a result of this. We'll go ahead and run this, play, 
And then when it's done, it's going to go ahead and move. Now, I don't know if that repeat actually happened there. Hard to tell. Uh, but that is kind of how you chain these things together. And then you just kind of keep adding them in and you can build more and more elaborate themes. And this whole idea is to get, um, you know, people started with game development, but at a very simple process. And you can kind of just experiment with various different pieces here to get things working. And then we've got little things like we can switch out the costume. So if I go here and we edit the sprite, so I'll go sprite. Uh, go here, we can go to paint. This will bring us into a paint tool and you will see we have costumes. So I'm actually painting an individual. I don't wanna do that. I wanna actually come up here to costumes and you see we have these two different costumes for the sprite. Now, a lot of you might look at that and say, wait a minute, aren't those frames? Well, yeah, essentially, oh, shut up. Uh, that is essentially what they are saying here. This, this is kind of the equivalent same thing. So we could also go ahead and change that frame or we could have done a frame in between each. So here's your repeat. So we could go here and move and say, move to, actually, I'm only gonna do it once, but you see how you could do this. So look, and then we're gonna say, uh, next costume. Okay, that'll work. So this will flip between each of our frames, each of our moves. So go ahead and run, click, and then you'll see we move between the each different costume. I'm going to move this guy back over here, and there you see. So it's very simple to string together things that you, you think about in traditional game development, things like frame-by-frame -frame animation and so on, without having to really understand that you're dealing with a sprite, with a frame, and so forth. So this is your coding structure, and we can actually even create our own blocks, or we can create variables. And another thing that you can do to tie things together, if you look back into the events or the controls, I can broadcast a message or I can receive messages. So you can actually use this as a way of communicating between different objects. So you can have, you know, um, player died hideous death, which probably isn't the right move for a game that you're making in Scratch. But if you can then respond later on to player died a hideous death and then have your code go accordingly. So you can say, when I receive the, the message and then I guess I would define my message, hideous death, then I'm gonna run the following code. So that's how you can string together much more complicated uh, things that go. And the same thing is over here, you see we have this single stage and click this guy right here and we can search and we'll see there are a bunch of assets. And this is another thing that makes Scratch really shine for beginners. It comes absolutely loaded with material to get you started. So if you wanted to go to a different background or we wanted to switch the background we started with. So there we go, we have this bedroom in here and then we could have it trigger for some reason to go to a different background. So so uh, when I, here I'll switch out my click. So we'll reuse our existing code. So let's select our sprite and then we'll just get rid of all of that. So when the sprite is clicked, what we're just gonna do is go ahead, go into look and say, switch backdrop to here. And then we can slick here and select uh, whichever backdrop we want from our list. Uh, so we can go say to bedroom one. So right here we're in backdrop and uh, no, let me go to We'll go to a random backdrop. So now when I go ahead, click this guy. Oh, I guess I need to add another one. Duh. Okay, so let's go. All right, so click back. <sighs> click paint, surprise, upload. No, I want, I want a second background. Okay, I'm not doing this wrong. I should be able to switch between state. Oh, maybe now that I've switched it, it'll allow me to change them. So let's go back here. Okay, so now it allows me to change them. So I'm gonna go back here to bedroom one. So when I go ahead and run this, again, that is a little clunky and I would definitely like to see usability changes here. I'd like to be able to select multiple different backdrops here that make up my game, as opposed to having to use them once and then switching between them in code. But anyways, go ahead, click here. So now when we click, we switch the backgrounds or the levels. So you can see you can very seamlessly get just about all the functionality you need from a traditional 2D gaming here through a pretty straightforward manner. Now, as we also saw a little bit earlier on, we have a sprite editor. So I come down here, we can search for sprites and there are a ton built in as well, which is really nice. So we see here, here's Casey dancing. And then if we go to Casey dancing, go to costumes, we'll see there are different frames of her dancing. So we can also come back here and we could go ahead and paint and we can create our own sprite using the built-in paint tools. And we can do multiple frames or multiple <laughs> costumes. And so you can define your sprites that way. So it's got all of the tools you need to create a beginner game built in as well. Uh, so there's our code habit, our costumes, our sprite editing, our backdrop editing, and what you may enjoy over here. And then we've also got a sound editor. So, so far we've just got that one sound. We can add a new one. And once again, search through.
we can pick a boing sound. So now we have a boing sound available for games. So there's a huge library of backdrops, sprites, and sound effects built in there for you to use. So your kid doesn't have to start worrying about this stuff right away. But in every particular case, every, when we saw choosing a sprite, we can upload one. When we saw here a background, we can upload one. And it comes here to audio, we can record, we can create one randomly, or we can upload one. So you do have interfaces to get all of this stuff into your game. And then you've even got editors built in here. We can do robotify, louder, softer, or we can trim the sound effect down. So all of the tools you would need to manipulate these various different components are actually all built into Scratch, which is also pretty cool. And um, I think that might be about it. Now, the other thing, and the big thing about 3.0 is this little button down here. And this is kind of cool. This is where your extensions come in. And these are the extensions that are built out of the box. So you see here, we've got music extension, pen extensions, video sensing, text-to-speech, translate, so on. So if I wanted to come in here and go uh, text-to-speech, I can add new blocks. So you see, we now have these new blocks in here. Go back to my first sprite. And then Hello. we'll go here. We'll drop that in there. I'll go uh, all your base are belong to us. And now when I go ahead and click this, we are going to see. So let's play. Click my sprite. All your base are belong to us. So there you go. So that is how an extension can be brought in. And now, <coughs> excuse me, for if you're a bit more of an advanced programmer, well, you can head on over to the GitHub page. Now, and the cool thing about this is this is all entirely open source. Now, I'm not 100% certain what license it's under, but given this is MIT, I assume it's MIT source licensed. Uh, but you see here, you got the various different projects, the GUI, the blocks that go together to make this up and so on. What you're probably going to want to check out is Scratch VM. Um, this is a virtual machine to run and so on. But when you come in here, you go into the source, like so, and you will notice extensions are here. And all of those extensions we just saw, you can see the full source code for them there as well. So if you want to create your own extensions, you can start from one of these ones. So here, for example, is the extension for doing uh, the speech to text. It's straight up JavaScript JSON combo. Um, and you've got pretty good documentation of what each callback actually is for. And so if you want to extend Scratch yourself, you can do so using JavaScript code. So if you've got a kid and your kid's saying, oh, how can I go ahead and do this? You can add that functionality yourself. So pretty cool stuff going on here. And this is entirely, once again, Scratch that we are talking about, an MIT project, completely free, and seriously, one of the best ways to get a kid started in game development. And once again, if you're interested in other ways, hey, I got you covered there as well. So like I said, this one is not necessarily for you, but I know a lot of people, I, the question of, oh, how should I get, you know, little Jimmy or Susie or whatever involved in game development? Well, in, in a lot of cases, the answer is really scratch. And one of the things I actually go through in this particular guide um, is two of the things you really want to get when you're introducing someone to game programming. And this, this goes for kids to adults and why in some cases Unity is a terrible choice as a starting program, but also a great choice because you can get a lot of results on screen quick. And that's great. Uh, uh, any kind of a feedback loop in any kind of learning is an excellent thing. So if you say, so, you know, okay, I want to start game development. Okay, well, here's C++. Start off by building your game engine, your game loop, bringing in an asset importer. And, you know, they're about 500 hours in to draw a polygon on screen. They're going to quit. But if you come in and say, okay, here's a, a game program and you can have a guy moving around screen in 20 minutes, that little win gives them encouragement, especially for kids, to just keep going. And the cool thing, the other thing that I think is very important is to have assets to work with. Now, a lot of places where people get bogged down, it's like, okay, well, I want to create a platforming game. It's like, okay, well, now not only do I need to figure out how to do it, but I have to gather all of the resources to create my game. And that's an area where Scratch really shines because it does come bundled with all of those resources to get you up and going. All of the editors and tools you need to work with stuff, again, it's simple, but that's kind of the point behind it. So, again, video is a little bit different than normally what we're doing on this channel. You know, this isn't Unreal Unity Godot. This is very, very basic compared to those, but that's because its target market is basic. And uh, Scratch 3.0 seems like a huge improvement. Congratulations to the MIT team. Um, you know, I'd love to hear your comments down below. If you looked at getting someone started with game development, what did you go with? After seeing this, are you thinking that uh, Scratch is a good choice? Coincidentally, if you like what you saw in Scratch, but you want to see something a little bit more advanced, check out either Stencil or GDevelop. Both are kind of 
more advanced versions of Scratch, basically. Um, and I don't mean that as an insult in any way. They take the same kind of approach, the same kind of all-in-oneness and a visual programming interface, and they kind of build everything in you need to create 2D games. So um, if you are looking for something like Scratch, but for you know a more advanced or a, a more aged person, definitely check out those two suggestions. There's a couple of others. Again, this guide has some as well, Game Maker Construct 2. Uh, but the two that immediately come to mind are Stencil and G-Develop. Those would be the two that I would recommend for someone to move beyond scratch with. All right, let me know your own opinions and all that stuff down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.